Hello everyone, welcome back to Senior Classroom. I'm John, and today we've got something interesting to talk about. In this video, we're going to explore MS SQL database projects using Visual Studio 2022. We'll keep it simple and easy to understand. Have you ever wondered what a database project is and why it matters? Well, we'll explain it to you. We'll also show you how to make one from scratch. So if you're curious about databases or starting out as a developer, you're in the right place. We'll guide you step by step. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to Senior Classroom for more tech tips and ring the notification bell. Let's dive in. Before we dive into creating an MS SQL database project, let's make sure we have the essential software and tools in place. This will ensure a smooth development process. First and foremost, you'll need Visual Studio 2022, or a later version. Visual Studio is a powerful integrated development environment that includes tools for creating and managing your database project. Next, you'll need access to a SQL Server instance. You can use a local instance if you're developing on your machine or connect to a remote SQL Server if you're working in a networked environment. Lastly, within Visual Studio, you'll want to ensure you have the SQL Server Data Tools SSDT extension installed. In most cases, SSDT is included with Visual Studio by default. It's the toolset that allows you to work on database projects. We're ready to move on to the next steps in creating our MS SQL database project. In this section, we'll begin by creating a database project in Microsoft Visual Studio 2022 and then import an existing SQL Server database named Classroom Dev. Let's get started. First, open MS SQL Server and check available databases and its SQL objects. In this server, there are three databases named Classroom Dev, Classroom QA, and Classroom Prod. In the next section, we will utilize each of these databases to understand the use cases of database projects. So open Visual Studio 2022 Click on Create a New Project. Choose SQL Server Database Project from the project templates. If it is not available, search for Templates. Click Next. Enter project name and location. Click the Create button. This action creates a brand new database project which serves as a container for all your database related assets. Now here's the exciting part. To import an existing database, right click on our database project in the Solution Explorer. Choose Import and then select Database. In this dialog, you can specify the source of your existing database. In our case, we're going to import Classroom Dev. After selecting your source, just hit Start. The magic will happen behind the scenes as Visual Studio imports all the SQL objects from the Classroom Dev database into your project. Once the import process is complete, you'll be able to see all the imported schemas and tables right here. Now we have successfully created a database project and imported an existing database into it. This is incredibly handy for managing and version controlling our database schema and objects. I'm going to take the next step 
and add a new table to the original Classroom Dev database. However, keep in mind that this change won't be reflected in our database project just yet. Let's begin by adding a new table to our original Classroom Dev database. In this case, we'll create a table called Users. As we can see, the Users table has been successfully added to the database. But here's the important part. Our database project doesn't know about this new table yet. To sync the project with the database, open our database project and select Schema Compare. Here, set the source as SQL Database, which represents our Classroom Dev database, and the target as SQL Database Project. Now click Compare. This comparison will highlight any differences between the database and the project. In our case, it's the new Users table. We've detected the difference. To import this change into our database project, simply click Update. Press Compare button once more to refresh the changes, so that we can confirm that there is no difference between Source Database and Database Project. Now our Database Project has been successfully updated to include the new Users table, ensuring that it's in sync with our original database. This is how we add a new table to our database and synchronize it with our MS SQL database project. Next is, I'm going to demonstrate how to add a new column, for example, address, to the users table within our database project. Double click on users SQL file. Type new column name and data type. Click the Save button. Now that we've made this change in the project, it's time to ensure that our SQL database is in sync. To do that, select Schema Compare. Here, set the source as SQL Database Project, which represents our project, and the target as SQL Database, our classroom dev connection. Now click Compare. This comparison will highlight any differences between the project and the SQL Server database. In our case, it's the addition of the address column. We've detected the difference. To sync these changes with the SQL Server, simply click Update.
the SQL Server database will now be updated to include the new address column. The address column has been successfully added to the users table. That's how we can seamlessly add a new column to our database project and synchronize it with our SQL Server database. Now I will explore the process of synchronizing multiple SQL changes. This could involve creating new tables, altering existing ones, or making any other structural modifications to our database. First, we'll provide a set of SQL statements to create new tables. Let's execute these SQL statements to create the new tables in our SQL Server database. Now, it's time to ensure that our SQL database project is in sync with the SQL Server database. To do that, open our database project and select Schema Compare. Here, set the source as SQL Database, which represents our Classroom Dev database, and the target as SQL Database Project. Now click Compare. This comparison will highlight any differences between the SQL Server database and the project. In our case, it's the new tables. We've detected these differences. To import the new tables and any other changes into our database project, simply click Update. Click the Compare button once more to ensure no difference is detected. And there you have it. All changes, new tables, have been successfully imported into our SQL database project. That's how we can efficiently sync multiple SQL changes between our SQL Server database and our database project. Now, we've made several changes in our Classroom Dev database project, and it's time to transfer those changes to the Classroom QI database. To do this, we'll begin by opening our database project just like we did before. Then, select Schema Compare. In the Schema Compare window, set the source as SQL Database Project, which represents our Classroom Dev database, and the target as SQL Server Database, our Classroom QA database. Now click Compare. This comparison will identify all the differences between our Classroom Dev database project and the Classroom QA database. Once the comparison is complete and the differences are highlighted, it's time to migrate those changes to the Classroom QA database. To do this, click Update. The database project changes will now be applied to the Classroom QA database. And there you have it. All changes we made in our Classroom Dev database project 
have been successfully migrated to the Classroom QA database. That's how efficiently transfer changes from our development database to QA database. The main advantages of using this database project are that we can easily track changes using a version control system. It helps us track changes, collaborate effectively, and provides a safety net for our project's history. In addition to that, if we ever need to roll back to a previous version of our project, we can do so easily thanks to the history of commits. I am using Git as my version control system. Here are my Git commit messages. Here we can see all the changes made to the database project. That's why committing changes to Git is crucial for database projects. This is the end of our video. We've explored the essential aspects of managing a database project. From creating, importing, and migrating changes to databases and syncing them with Git for version control, you've gained a solid foundation in database management. Remember, it's all about staying organized, collaborating efficiently, and keeping our database projects under control. Thank you for joining us on this database project journey. We'll continue to dive deeper into advanced techniques and best practices in our upcoming videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more insightful tutorials. Until next time, keep those databases humming and your projects thriving. Goodbye.